A few months ago I bought an Elugu Saturn III, which unfortunately is a little too big for my existing enclosure, so I had to build a new one. I tried to sell my original Saturn, but no one wanted it, so now I have to fit two printers in the case. Compared to my old case, I no longer wanted a pull-out drawer. I only needed that to get the printer cover on and off, but as it's in a UV-protected housing anyway, it's unnecessary and will simply be left out in the future. I will also leave out the heater from now on. From my experience, heating the resin before printing is enough to maintain the temperature during printing. And if that's no longer the case, because it's too cold, I will just wait for better weather. And last but not least, it's apparently better to have the exhaust air at the bottom and not at the top of the housing, as the VOCs are heavier than air and sink to the bottom. So the first thing I did was to start Blender to design the enclosure. I already had a 3D model of the original Saturn, which I adapted to the Saturn 3 size, and then I built the housing around the two printers. When doing that, I made sure that at least one dimension matched the wooden boards I bought. In my case, they were 80 cm long, 60 cm wide and 1 cm thick. So I chose 80 cm for the length of the housing, so the floor and back panel only needed to be cut at one side. You can see the colored parts here, with the original board dimensions behind in grayish. A hole in the back is for the exhaust air connection. And if you want to suck air out of the housing, you have to get air in somewhere else. So there is a hole in the lid with an adjustable ventilation grill to make sure of that. And there are two more holes for USB extension cables so that I can plug the USB sticks in and out from outside. At this point I was still trying to work out how exactly I would open and close the door later. But after this rough planning, ordering the materials and printing a few other parts, it was off to my dad's workshop. All in all, I guess the enclosure parts cost me a little over 100 bucks. Equipped with the drawing, the first step was to saw the wood to size. A small challenge here was that the lid and base had to be sawn with a beveled saw blade. But once all the parts had the correct dimensions, we drilled holes at the distance of 5mm from the edge and screwed the parts together after drilling. Then we drilled the holes for the USB adapter and sawed out the hole for the ventilation. This 3D printed part is placed on the inside of the air inlet in the lid and is attached to the lid with magnets. A filter mat in between will ensure that no dust is sucked in. And then unfortunately we realized that we hadn't worked according to the drawing and had screwed the two side panels to the side of the floor panel instead of screwing them to the top side of the floor panel. So we had to disassemble everything again and screw those parts to the floor from below by drilling new holes to the underside of the floor panel. And after that the total length was correct. Next we cut out the hole for the exhaust air pipe drilled holes for the rear panel and attached the back panel to the enclosure. As the front is slanted, the 60 cm width of the panel was not longer sufficient, so we cut out a small strip to close this gap. However, the strip will be at the bottom later, not at the top. Since I want to be able to observe my printers, we also did a cutout in the drawer for a 60 by 40 cm plexiglass panel. For this step we used the only slightly more specialized tool that probably not everyone has, a router. You can use it to mill a pocket in which the plexiglass panel can then lie. If you don't have this, you can of course just glue the panel to the inside. We then cut a 12 cm diameter air pipe to fit the tube fan. The tube is attached with two 3D printed clamps. A flex tube will later go over the top part of the tube. To seal the door better, we then remove the back panel again and cut approximately 1.5 cm thick strips of wood, which we then glued to the back of the door. This also ensures that the door has a guide and can be positioned more easily. And the small wood strips also ensure that the door fits snugly to the body of the enclosure. At this point we also decided that we would not make a hinge on the door at all. We then painted the entire housing with a grey wood primer. That looks better and the wood won't soak up the resin immediately. Then the workshop trip to my dad's was over and I started assembling everything in my workshop. I attached the power supply for the two printers with hot glue 
and I printed a grill for the exhaust air pipe that I can stick onto the pipe and fill that with activated carbon. To make sure that carbon stays in place, I cut up a pair of tights and glued them to the grill. I also used magnets here to connect the parts. I also attached the lid for the air inlet with hot glue. And here is the grid for the inside where the filter wedding goes. Finally I attached the plexiglass sheet to the wood with silicone. Here I made sure it was a plexiglass version that absorbs UV light and doesn't let it through. Unfortunately, when I ordered it, it wasn't clear that this panel is not clear, but slightly milky. But I hope that it will be enough to check the printer later while it is printing. Then I moved the enclosure to its new location. As you can see here, I ended up doing the door without a hinge or locking mechanism. Just two 3D printed handles and the door is held in place solely by friction between the edge of the door and the housing. Then I took out one printer to have some space to use a smoke stick to test the air extraction. So I lit the stick, put the lid on, waited a bit and then turned on the extractor. And as you can see, it seems to work. And with that, my enclosure was done and now it's time to get back to printing. So stay tuned what those two machines output in the future.